welcome to this event. This is put on by The Skim, one of my favorite websites on the planet, and my birth control provider, Anavera, which is the only annual birth control ring. We should all thank Anavera because they're the reason I have not brought a child into the world. So round of applause for Anavera. You don't want, you don't want my kid running around out there. Anyway, let's just really get to what today is all about, which is my vagina. We're here today to talk about my least favorite phrase that vagina owners tend to say constantly. No, not, did you wash your hands? Uh, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about the word sorry. Women, as you know, have a very long history of apologizing when they should not have to. You know, throughout history, we have continually had to say we were sorry constantly. We probably had to say it numerous times back in the day and made it a habit, you know, to stop men from, from killing us. You know, we had to say it, you know. We'd say, I'm sorry, please don't. But then we, what we didn't know is that being apologetic and scared was probably turning them on. So it was probably making things worse for us. But that's not the point. We have it like embedded in our DNA, you know, and unlike some, comedians who simply aren't satisfied with a steady stream of 25-year-old models, I have apologized. Um, too much, in fact. You know, I think women just apologize too much. It's like our default setting that we've done something wrong. You know, I've done it automatically for so long, I don't even catch myself. And the worst is when someone accepts your apology. When you're just like, oh, sorry, sorry, someone runs in you, sorry. And they're like, you're good. You're like, wait, what? Wait, that wasn't a real apology. You can't accept that apology. I didn't. <laughs> so I'm here on behalf of Anna Vera, the unapologetic birth control that is currently up my vagina. And because being serious, it's just not my forte. I think if anything, we all just need to laugh right now, even about really serious things. So shall we? Are you cool or are you a bunch of nerds? Can we go for it? <laughs> We wrote some things that women have been programmed to be apologetic for because I think we should all unapologize for all this. You know, just for context, like I grew up at a time when everything about women's bodies, it was very vague, it was very shame driven. Like, remember back we'd watch commercials growing up where the that were for like maxi pads or periods, and they would put to show the absorbency like a blue, blue liquid drop. They drop blue drops. I thought that's what was gonna happen. Imagine my surprise when I had my first period and it wasn't blue. I thought it was blue, then it turned out red, much like my uncle's in 2016. <laughs> this was a long time ago. This was back before we realized that fad diets are actually just eating disorders and that most guys cannot be allergic to latex. That's not a thing. Nobody knew anything about our bodies. We we're all just guessing, you know, remember? This was back when our food pyramid had the whole bottom level was just bread, <laughs> loaves, and pasta, remember? And then like the top was like the fruit section There was just like a couple grapes. And there were like grape runts at the top. <laughs> we apologize for everything, but guys never apologize. You know, like when I'm in the workplace with people, I'm always like, sorry, sorry, do you want me to get that? Do you want me to get that? Guys never apologize. Guys never apologize and they do the most flagrant things in meetings that are so disgusting. Like, have you ever had a meeting with a, with a guy and, and before they sit down, you have to watch them like jiggle, <laughs> jiggle their, bounce, bounce their balls up so they can then sit, so they bounce it I don't, into the little tent? Like, I don't know, I'm just, did it get in there? Like, did you get it in the hoop? Like, I now have to look and see, and that's all I'm staring at, right? And then, Meeting's over, they get up, like it's nothing. <laughs> did you just shake your ball off your leg? Did I watch you unstick a sweaty ball from your leg like at 11 a.m. at work? I feel like it's weird because it's, it's the people that should apologize, never apologize. And the people that shouldn't always do. Like, did you see a couple singers just had their songs come out? These female singers, they apologized for some words they had in their songs, right? Yet the musician who wrote, throw some D's on that bitch, <laughs> Radio silence. <laughs> the reason I really want to talk about all this today is because I think that we're all looking for ways to address this recent upheaval in all that women have been experiencing emotionally. We are, of course, uh, having to face women's basic freedoms being taken from them because some old people just refuse to die. Um, <laughs> There's an attack on women right now, and it kind of makes sense, you know? I, I, women becoming more equal, it's very scary to men, you know? I feel, I feel like as soon as women started having like standards, men knew they wouldn't be able to keep us around unless they literally chained us to a hospital bed. 
Uh, but they can't do, I mean, I'm kidding, they can't do that. <laughs> no one has health care, it will cost a fortune. Um, I believe that women should be able to choose when they have kids. Uh, in fact, I think the choice should extend to even after you have the kid. Like if you have a kid and your husband refers to hanging out with the kid as babysitting, you should be able to leave and take all the money. <laughs> and as you go yell, it's called parenting. <laughs> We apologize all the time. Women apologize for everything. We have so much shame and embarrassment about our periods. I used to be so embarrassed about my period. You know, like why asking a guy to go grab a tampon? Like why do we have to apologize for that? Guys are psyched to go buy us tampons. All they're thinking is like, ah, oh, she's not pregnant. Like it's the, she's not pregnant, victory walk. They're psyched. I also think it's good for you to have your guy buy you tampons because that's when you get to find out whether he thinks you're super or not. <laughs> I won't apologize for it anymore. You know, I used to not go swimming because I was too embarrassed if I was on my period. Like, I'm not gonna apologize for swimming on my period. Yes, there's a red string, fine, get over it, okay? It's, it's not weird, kids love it. Kids like it. You just tell them that you're a wind-up toy and they freak out. I used to apologize for not having a kid all the time to my relatives, to my, I don't have a kid, sorry, I'm not ready. Like, I'm not, I will have kids when I am ready, okay? I, I'm not ready yet. Like I. I don't know if I want kids yet. Like, I mean, I do have three pit bulls, so I'm just worried. Like, you know, like, what if, what if the kid bites one of my dogs? Like, I don't know what I would do, you know? <laughs> I also may want to adopt. I'm a big, like, animal rescue person. I kind of feel like having your own baby at this point is like buying a dog from a breeder. Like, have you, a lot of babies look like French bulldogs. You know I'm right. <laughs> I'm just waiting. I'm waiting to have kids until I find someone who checks all the boxes, you know, checks all the boxes as a good father, you know, and I have a list. Like, my current requirements uh, for someone I could co-parent with are, um, doesn't have all his money in crypto. <laughs> Number two, doesn't try to make a new nickname for himself as an adult. <laughs> Do you know these guys? So they like, hey, I'm Richard, but everyone calls me Zane. <laughs> Number three, he cannot be polyamorous. I'm not doing this, especially not if you're gonna use some bro science to justify, like, you know, like in tribal times, you know, polyamory was actually how the species was proliferated and you shouldn't do monogamy. You're like, okay, so you don't believe in monogamy, but you do believe in invisible money? <laughs> Copy that. This also gives me a choice in how my life goes. You know, I'm not ready for a kid. After 20 years of dating in Los Angeles, I already feel like a mother of four. <laughs> like I just gotta get this last ex through rehab. <laughs> One of them can almost read. Uh, <laughs> he can now take orders at the coffee bean he works at. And my most recent ex just graduated from Raya and he's moving on to Hinge. <laughs> There's just too much I wanna do before I have kids. You know, I also wanna like let my uh, friends have kids before I do, like especially my friends that I partied with in my 20s. Like I just wanna make sure that all the like Zima clear malts <laughs> that we drank and all the whippets we did didn't like break anything. Like I just wanna see if their kids are weird first, you know? <laughs> I am still on birth control, uh, which I'm not sorry about either. Sometimes like, you know, people wanna make me feel embarrassed about that, I'm not. Like, Cause there's also, I've been through every form of birth control. I finally found one that actually works for me, you know, there's, I mean, there's the pill, there's condoms, you know, there's watching a man hold a microphone on a couch while podcasting. There's lots of forms of birth control these days. No, I had an IUD, does anyone have an IUD? Yeah, come here, we'll take it out. Uh, come on up, we're gonna. I just think it's wild that we're all just fine with the fact that IUDs, are just, half of them are metal. Like, we're, no, one, no one cares about meteorology, no one knows, like, I don't. That weirds me out. Like I just, I, can't, I don't want to have to cancel plans to be like, hey, I'd really love to see you for the movie, but I think there's a storm. I don't know. It looks like lightning might be on the. Her. I don't want metal in my uterus. I don't want to like be going through TSA and like going through the scanner and feeling like everyone's like, oh, we have a slut going to Denver coming through now. Back check. <laughs> There are IUDs that are made of plastic. I know everyone wants to argue with me about that. But like, if you think stepping on a Lego is bad, imagine jamming one into your uterus. I will reconsider the IUD. That's my deal. I'll reconsider the IUD as soon as they make a version for guys. Can you imagine how that conversation would go down? That would never fly. If someone was like, hey, so for birth control, we're gonna take a, a metal rod and we're gonna jam it up your pee hole. And we're gonna leave it there for like five years. Or 
we haven't really thought that far ahead. So if you have any problems, just call poison control. <laughs> The pill I was on forever. I just think the pill is so patronizing, you know? It's like it's the only medication that comes with a calendar. Like the only like we're too dumb to you had to put it in an advent calendar so that we would remember to take like you want me to take my birth control pill? You don't have to put it in a calendar. Just make the pills in the shape of a tiny crying baby. <laughs> There's a morning after pill, you know, but I don't, it's $49. It's $49.99. Like I've never hooked up with a guy in the next morning and been like, yeah. That was worth 50 bucks. <laughs> Morning, it's all awkward too because you want to split it with the guy. Like I don't even know. It's just like what happens when you split a morning after pill with a guy? Like what do you what do you put in the Venmo description? Like, I just try to put tons of astrological signs so he has no doubt that he doesn't want me to be the mother of his child. <laughs> I used to always apologize for not being able to have an orgasm or having one quick enough or whatever. You know, female orgasm, that category, it's up 14% on porn sites. You know what else is up? MILF porn and then stepbrother with stepsister. So female orgasm is in the same category as taboo things that should never happen. <sighs> I know I've been talking for a long time, but I'm also not apologizing for taking too long at anything. It takes forever. I'm not, that's not our fault. I'm not sorry about that. I used to be though. I used to be like, I'm so sorry I didn't have an orgasm in the back of your brother's PT cruiser while you blasted Mumford and Sons. And I tried to get out of my H&M jumpsuit. I guess something's wrong with me. In order to have an orgasm, you have to be able to take deep breaths. I don't get to take deep breaths during sex anymore because all the guys are watching porn and they're all trying to choke us now. They're all trying to, so then I have to pretend I'm, I'm getting choked to death. I have to participate. So I'll be like, ah, 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 ah. I can't. and then to try to just speed it along so that it'll finish faster, I'll be like, I'm sorry. Thank you so much to Anna Vera for doing this campaign, to working with me. I know I'm a risky bitch uh, to be in business with. I am so grateful that I get to work uh, with a company that is all about uh, expanding women's choice, drawing attention, making um, birth control effective. It is annual, it is reversible. So thank you, Anna Vera, because now I can finally tell my mom I got a ring from a doctor. <laughs> thank you, everyone. I'm Winnie Cummings, and... I'm not sorry. Love you guys. <laughs>